This is the Transcontinental Railroad, a famous icon of our beloved United States of America. These white workers you see over here are being admired for supposedly completing a feat that would be considered legendary back in the 1860s. Many Americans today still think of them as the glorified constructors of the Transcontinental Railroad. But not many know about the invisible workers in this picture, the Chinese immigrants, the true heroes of this railroad. The Chinese immigrants were the majority group when building the railroad, along with the Irish, Mexican, and other immigrants. It took five years to complete and it cost $136 million, twice the federal budget in the 1860s. But this investment was not entirely fruitless as the railroad did not benefit only its few investors, but all of America. Leland Stanford, one of the main investors of the Central Pacific Railroad Company, set out the idea of a railroad to unite the East and West on January 8, 1863. This railroad had been a dream almost since the steam locomotive made its first appearance in the early 1830s. Congress agreed to the plan and said that it would pay the two railroad companies assigned to the task, the Central Pacific and Union Pacific Railroad Companies, between $16,000 to $48,000 for each mile of track laid. As each company raced to see who could lay down the most track, the Central Pacific Railroad Company encountered a problem. They needed more workers. About 4,000 spots were open for the taking, but only around 600 workers were employed at any one time. The Irish made up most of the workforce. However, they were unreliable and consumed a lot of alcohol. As railroad work was hard and grueling, and there were many other better opportunities, many stayed only until the next payday rolled around. Charles Crocker, concerned about the lack of laborers, set forth an idea. The Chinese were the perfect solution. Many were still in California from the gold rush and were looking for work as gold got sparser. However, James Harvey Strobridge, a foreman of the railroad, disagreed. He was adamant about keeping his workplace free from the Chinese. It came around, though, when Crocker convinced him, saying, did they not build the Chinese wall, the biggest piece of masonry in the world? Strobridge first had them working as wagon loaders. The Chinese proved to be extremely hardworking and productive. They were nicknamed Celestials, and they were assigned to do more tasks, such as rail laying and spike drilling. Soon after, the Central Pacific comprised of 12,000 Chinese workers, making up 90% of its total workforce. Compared to their white superiors, they received less money and worked in poorer conditions. They were paid 27 to $30 a month, minus the cost of food and board, while the Irish were paid $35 a month, including board. Even the allocation for feed for horses, $50 a month each, was $20 more than what the average Chinese worker earned. The Chinese had to cope with harsh weather as they worked through two of the worst winters in American history and temperatures ranging from 50 degrees below zero to a soaring 120 degrees Fahrenheit. They also received beatings, were severely discriminated against, assigned the dangerous job of blasting through mountains to create a path for the railroad, and worked a long 12-hour workday every day of the week, except for Sunday. These white overseers on horseback would actually beat the Chinese, all right, because they weren't working hard enough or fast enough and so forth. About 1,200 Chinese deaths are estimated due to avalanches, faulty explosives, snowstorms, and disease. The Chinese became agitated about their treatment and therefore conducted a strike in 1867 while working on Donner's Pass. The weather conditions were harsh and many died then. Blizzardy weather and avalanches struck the camps often. The Chinese workers demanded more money for the work they did. They were the ones to blast through mountainsides and lay down tracks. They demanded $35 to $40 instead of the $27 they received then. Chinese workers stayed in their camps for one week, not working. Also demanded shorter work shifts, the usual being work from dawn till dusk. The white overseers would not comply and the Chinese non-violently refused to budge. Soon the Chinese increased their demands of $45 a month. 
Crocker then simply cut off their food and other supplies. After a week of starvation, the Chinese reluctantly succumbed and turned back to work. Although the Central Pacific Railroad Company was on the brink of bankruptcy and pure discrimination of the Chinese was inevitable, this was no excuse for the company to try to write the Chinese out of history altogether and cheat them of everything they could. When I was probably your age, I guess you guys are in the 8th grade? 7th grade. 7th seven. Seven grade, alright. So you're actually finding out about it a year earlier than I did. All right. But that was the first time uh, in school that I realized that the Chinese had any contribution to the history of uh, this country. In fact, after the railroad was completed, the Central Pacific Railroad Company laid off the majority of the Chinese workers. They denied the immigrants even of their promised trip back to California and left them stranded in the desert. The Chinese, though, were discriminated against after. Many believed them to be lazy and liars. They were barred from stores and other public places. Following the construction, the Chinese Exclusion Act took place from 1882 to 1943. The reason that that the Chinese were not given credit is you have to go back to the social political uh, environment at the time. The Chinese at the time, uh, the presence of the Chinese in the West were resented and actually there was a movement all that time, even during the building of the railroad at that period, the Chinese were considered undesirable. There's an attempt to eliminate them from the, uh, the West Coast. The government required the Chinese to wear ID badges to make sure that they were legally supposed to be in the U.S. This badge, however, was only worn by criminals and prostitutes and not other immigrants of different nationalities. So the badge had a negative connotation of shame and marked the Chinese as different from the rest of the populace. However, the railroad still improved many aspects of a typical American life, strengthened communication within America, and provided a way to transport the valuable and abundant resources from California so they could be a benefit to the economy in the United States. Even though the original rails and ties have long since been replaced, railroads today still generally run along the path paved by the Chinese, especially in the mountainous areas. But the railroad would have been built without the Chinese in some way. It would probably triple the building time, and the U.S. economy would not be as great. The 136 million debt would be paid way later, but it is nearly certain that without the railroad, life today would be different, as economic growth and modernization in the U.S. would have been delayed by decades. The Chinese still remain unknown faces in the building of this illustrious railroad. The way they were treated was wrong, but they were really determined in building this railroad and would be proud to be an important, yet largely unknown, part of the shaping of the United States. Their hard work increased the United States economy and made the United States a better place for future Chinese immigrants. The railroad, uh... More, more, you know, uh, Chinese came. As a matter of fact, a year after they were completed, um, I think something like 90 Chinese uh, traveled to uh, North Adams, Massachusetts, uh, on the railroad, uh, and they were going to North Adams, Massachusetts, to break a, a, a strike in the shoe factory. And uh, in the same year, there's uh, about uh, the same number uh, of Chinese that. Uh, uh, got to New Jersey. They were a small piece in a vast puzzle. Perhaps the best thing citizens of the United States now can do is to honor them and remember what they sacrificed for our country.